Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Bishopsgate Institute. Whether you are with us in person, it is so lovely to see lovely, real people who want to be in the auditorium to enjoy music. You are very welcome. And welcome to those joining us on Facebook Live. This is the first time we have ever streamed anything live from this, uh, from this auditorium, from this hall. Please bear with us if there are any technical problems. I'm sure there won't be, but please bear with us. We're testing this. So thank you to Emily and Harry as well for being willing to test. Um, Bishopsgate Institute is a charity, as you know, and these concerts are free, as you know. Uh, they always have been. Um, if you would like to make a donation, and thank you to the gentleman who already has. I noticed he went over to the contactless device, so thank you. If you'd like to make a donation, you, that would be most welcome and also those of you on Facebook live you can donate from the link uh, which is on our Facebook page that links you to our website to our give section that would be most appreciated so why lunchtime concerts well during the Second World War um, a fabulous woman called Dame Myra Hess saw that the government had closed all the theatres and had closed all the concert halls, this is sounding familiar, um, because they felt that it was important at a time of great difficulty to minimize risk to people. But all of the inspiration and all of the light went out of people's lives. And so Myra Hess said, no, we need something to fight for. We need something to inspire us. We need something to make it worth battling with everything we're dealing with. And that feels incredibly true today. So she convinced the director of the National Gallery that there should be concerts. And she played and she curated and she got all of her concert pianist friends to come and play and other musicians. And it made a huge difference. Thousands of people would queue every day to come and see uh, something, to listen to something and be inspired. We are very inspired by that, this philosophy. And since 1948, we have been running lunchtime concerts here at Bishopsgate Institute. We are particularly connected to Dame Myra Hess because to my right, so obviously there's the lovely Harry, but there is also the lovely Myra. So this is Myra the Steinway, at Myra the Steinway on Twitter, which is the Steinway piano that belonged to Myra Hess. It was her personal piano once she retired and it lived with her at home and a lot of her transcriptions were written on this piano. Um, and she's a, a member of the family here at Bishopsgate Institute. So she's very much part of the lunchtime concerts. Today's concert is the fabulous Emily McDowell and the fabulous Harry Style. Um, Emily, you may have seen, if you saw our production of West Side Story, um, Emily was our Maria. It feels like, I mean, it was two years ago. It's a very long time uh, in this very room. Uh, and Harry, among other things, uh, is an MD and uh, an orchestrator and uh, obviously a pianist and one quarter of a barbershop quartet called the Ashertones. Um, whom we might well be seeing on this stage, I hope, at some point in the future. So we have a fabulous selection today. Emily will talk you through her song choices. Um, please enjoy, please take this hour and enjoy with us the opportunity to listen to live music. Thank you so much for joining us. Emily and Harry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Francesca. And welcome to the first in the series of lunchtime concerts brought to you here from Bishopsgate Institute. Harry and I are going to bring you some jazz, um, things inspired from our archive library here at Bishopsgate. But before I get into that, and let's play you some music. Say it's only a paper moon hanging over a cardboard sea. But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me. Yes, it's only a camber sky sailing over a muslin tree. But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me without your love. It's a honky-tonk Without 
out your love. Baby, but do that day. Dun 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 you heard there was Harold Arlen's Paper Moon, a personal favorite of mine, which I learned as 10 years old, and it was the song that brought me to jazz, followed by All of Me, a jazz standard classic written by Gerald Marks and Seymour Simons. The lyricist is so poetic in the song. He claims, take my lips, I want to lose them. Take my arms, I'll never use them. Obviously, he's not heard of social distancing. Um, <laughs> I can't do this concert without mentioning COVID. It's part of our living history now, and our hearts go out to all of those affected. I uh, hope that today we can bring some sunshine in what is a very rainy day. Um, I'm an old-fashioned soul. My friends and I, we like to send each other letters and postcards. But when lockdown hit, we weren't really sure if it was still safe. So we had to get creative. I'm gonna sit right down and write myself a letter And make believe it came from you I'm gonna write words all so sweet They're gonna knock me off my feet Kisses on the bottom I'll be glad I got there I'm gonna smile and say I hope you're feeling better sign with love the way you do I'm gonna sit right down and write myself a letter and make believe it came from you I'm 
I'm gonna sit right down and write myself a letter and make believe it came from you. I'm gonna write words oh so sweet, they're gonna knock me off my feet. bit about the archive library here at Bishopsgate. Now it's a beautifully just architecturally first opened to the public in 1895. It hosts hundreds and thousands of different collections and it's definitely worth a visit on their website where they list everything. Now they have 150,000 pamphlets, maps, images, books of London. But not just London's history, there's also 350,000 press cuttings in the lesbian and gay news media archive and a whopping half a million images in the photographic archive. It's really quite something. Our favorite thing that we found so far is uh, a book written by Charlie Chaplin in 1922 called My Wonderful Visit. During this book, he takes you on a journey from Hollywood, returning back for a visit to his hometown of London. He's so nostalgic as he goes around the areas of London he was brought up as a child. And now, as an aristocrat, he explores the high society life of the nightlife of London. It's so romantic, and the song we've chosen next is possibly the most romantic, nostalgic song I could think of. It became a wartime favorite in Britain, owing to the feelings of separation and longing for a happier time and to be together again. Now, in this current mood and situation we're in, maybe this song is just as relevant now as it was back then. This is A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square.
by Irving Berlin for his 1935 absolute classic film, Top Hat. As a young child, I was so enamored by Ginger Rogers. And in this scene, she's dancing with her co-star Fred Astaire in an iconic blue ostrich feather dress. As a young girl, I thought she was just perfect. Although perfect is not how the filming went of this scene. During the filming, all the feathers started falling off, flying everywhere, getting in their mouths. But as true superstars, they carried on. Although Fred Astaire was less than happy about it and later claimed that dancing that scene was like a chicken being attacked by a coyote. <laughs> um, a few years later, he was starring in another musical film called A Damsel in Distress, written by the Gershwin brothers, this time without Ginger Rogers. It was set in London, and the classic standard, nice work if you can get it, originates from this show. And during the scene, Fred Astaire is seen to do a tap number whilst playing the drums. It's really quite spectacular, and I do recommend that you look it up on YouTube. The talent is am amazing. 
Um, so we're going to perform nice work if you can get it now, um, but without the tap or drum solo. <laughs> of London and jazz, I have to mention Amy Winehouse. She was a huge inspiration of mine, and when she released her self-proclaimed hip-hop jazz fusion album, Frank, namely after Frank Sinatra, it only, not only brought jazz to the 21st century, it also brought women. She had a no-care attitude, and her raw emotions and feelings and opinions she willingly shared with people, and it's so evident in her lyrics. This next song, I Heard Love Was Blind, is a song where she's explaining to her boyfriend how she cheated on him, but it wasn't really cheating because she was thinking of him the whole time. Exactly the same shade of brown. Why are you so upset? Baby, you weren't there. It was dark and I was lying down. You are everything. He means nothing to me. I can't even remember his name. I 
suffering so much I needed to touch. Oh, don't overreact. I'd pretend that he wants you. You wouldn't want me to be lonely. How can I put it so you understand? I didn't let him hold my hand. Talking of cheaters, my ex-boyfriend uh, loved this next song, uh, written by Taylor Swift. Originally a pop folk number, but when we broke up, Harry amazingly arranged it into a gorgeous jazz ballad, and I'm totally in love with it. When he did, we recorded it here at Bishopsgate Institute, which you can actually still find on YouTube, as well as some of the other recordings we did with a fab ensemble. And uh, yeah, that's on YouTube. But um, Without further ado, this is I Almost Do. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
coming to the end of this concert. Now I want to say firstly, thank you. Thank you to Francesca and everyone here at Bishopsgate Institute for having us. We are super honored to be here. We're really pleased to say thank you so much for organizing everything and making sure everything's safe and according to guidelines is lovely. Thank you. I want to tell you a couple of things I noticed from this book, My Wonderful Visit by Charlie Chaplin. There was two things. One, his generosity. He had such a care and adoration for people, no matter where they came from, whatever background, whatever politics, whatever religion. And he would regularly give out money to those less fortunate than himself. Perhaps as he came from a poor working class background in London, maybe he could relate. But what also came so apparent is he said the words, smile. 57 times in this small book. Now, it's actually um, World Smile Day, which is perfect because that's kind of how we're concluding today's uh, concert. And um, when he says smile, he says it in the context of, I must remember to put on my prop smile. It wants to become habit to him. There's something sad about that as he talks to the press and the media and his fans. He had so many fans. When he arrived in London, he had 73,000 letters uh, from uh, letters and postcards from all of his fans. He had to have a second hotel room just to store them. And uh, in the book, he recounts some of the more humorous letters that he received. People from uh, business propositions, long-lost family relatives, he had many of those, many long-lost mothers, and, uh, and of course, his fans. And I want to leave you with his closing reflection of his time in London. He says, I'm sorry I'm going. I feel despondent and sad. I want to hug all of them. There is something so wistful about London, about their kind, gentle appreciation. They smile tenderly. Every side of London, it's the same. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile, and maybe tomorrow, smile, and maybe tomorrow, you'll see the sun come shining through. If you just light up your face with gladness hide every trace of sadness although a tear may be ever so near that's the time you must keep on trying smile what's the use of crying you'll find that life is still worthwhile
it's breaking when there are clouds in the sky you get by if you smile through your fear and sorrow smile and maybe tomorrow there'll be a sun come shining I did say to my team that there was no point wearing mascara today. <laughs> How beautiful was that? <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm very emotional <laughs> for us to actually have music back in this building after so much um, difficulty. So thank you, everyone, for joining us in person on Facebook Live. And thank you again to Emily and Harry for a glorious, glorious concert. Do you have an encore? She's looking panicky. <laughs> Could you... Put something together for one more? Because I have to pull myself together somehow, so let's, let's cover this up if we can. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, we will be back next week. Um, we have something very different for you, which is connected to the music and the inspiration of somebody called Ernst Schoen. Um, you can read more detail on the website. We have Lotte Betts Dean, Joseph Harvat, and uh, obviously the music of uh, Ernst Schoen. It will be another 55 minutes. You can join us in person. You can join us on Facebook Live. We'd be very grateful if you'd make a donation. Um, those that have already, thank you. And those that haven't, uh, you're most welcome to do so on your way out of the auditorium uh, or via our website. So I'm going to say thank you one more time because I think I've panicked them completely <laughs> um, to Emily and Harry for a superb concert. Would you like to come back one more time or should we let you go? <laughs> one more? You can probably do one. Would you like them to do one more? I have put them on the spot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Emily and Harry. Very rusty, uh, so we didn't expect an encore. <laughs> Please sing along if you know the words, because that might help me. <laughs> <laughs> Each 
Thank you. Thanks.